Hi guys, welcome to our home. Many of you were here last summer uh, and saw the harpsichord up close, but I thought I would take even cl a closer look at it today and show you a little bit more about how it works. This particular harpsichord was built in 1982 by Anderson H. Dupree, and you can see his name and the date right here on the nameplate. Uh, Mr. Dupree is actually a resident of Bainbridge Island, so he's very close to us and he's a good friend of mine. Another thing you might notice about the harpsichord is that it has two keyboards. Remember that the harpsichord is really an antique instrument, although this is a modern one. Harpsichords were very popular from about 1500 to about 1750. After that time, the piano was invented and it kind of took over because it could play louder and different kinds of music could be played on it. So harpsichords weren't built again for several for quite a while, until about 75 years ago, people started getting interested in the harpsichord once again, and uh, harpsichord builders started building them. So we have two keyboards here, and you might notice that the colors of the keys are re reversed. The naturals are black, and the sharps are white. Uh, that was very typical back in those days, even though it's uh, obviously quite different on the piano. The black keys are made of ebony, and in the old days, the old antique harpsichords built two, three hundred years ago, the sharps were covered with ivory, as you might ex expect. But of course, today, uh, not, ivory is not used at all. Instead, they use cow bone, which looks and feels just like ivory. And of course, cow bone is very, very plentiful today. So let's take a look inside. I'm going to open up the instrument so you can see what it looks like inside. So you will notice that the soundboard, this thin piece of spruce here, is painted with all sorts of beautiful flowers. That was very traditional back in the old days when they built harpsichords in the 17th, 18th century. They would paint the soundboard with beautiful flowers and they would always include a bird this happens to be a great white egret. And this bird is sitting on a dead log. That was also very typical. Usually birds were uh, painted inside harpsichords on dead logs. And that represented the dead wood that the harpsichord was made of, the aged wood. And when you played it, beautiful sounds and beautiful singing would come out of the instrument, just like the beautiful bird song from the white egret sitting on the uh, dead log there. So let me show you a little bit more about how the instrument works. If I take this piece off and I play a note, you can see this little thing jumping up here when I play the note. It's called the jack. Originally they were made of wood. This one is made of plastic. And at the top of the jack is a tiny little piece of plastic, black plastic, a plectrum, it's called. It's like a pick that would, you would pick a guitar with. And when this goes past the string, it plucks the string just like a guitar would. And then this little red piece of felt dampens the string, stops the sound when you release the key. This thing is just sitting right on the end of the key, at the other end of the key. Now, if I were to play a few notes very loudly, Look what happened. Oops. The jacks just jump right out of their holes. And in order to keep them under control and in their holes, I have to put this piece on top of it. And this keeps them from jumping out of the holes. This harpsichord has 183 strings. Each note on the bottom keyboard has two different strings. One that plays a normal pitch, and then one that plays higher, an octave higher. The low one, the high one, and here they are together. The upper keyboard also has only one set of strings, and they're uh, voiced a little bit softer lower keyboard. You can hear the difference in the tonal quality of these two different keyboards. I 
have one more knob here that I can push over. And what that does is it pushes little pieces of felt up against the end of the strings. And that dampens the string a little bit to give it a completely different sound. Here it is without the dampers and with the dampers. Very beautiful sound. Now if I want to play both keyboards at the same time, I just push this one back and that engages a mechanism inside that couples the two keyboards together. You can see the phantom fingers up here playing this keyboard. Now I'm going to finish today by playing a piece of music by one of the most famous composers of all times, Johann Sebastian Bach. He lived from 1685 to 1750, and he wrote hundreds and hundreds of pieces of music for the harpsichord, for strings, for brass instruments, for wind instruments, for singers. Amazing how much music he wrote. Uh, he was also a very prolific father. He had 21 children altogether, which to me is also very impressive. So I'm going to end by playing uh, a little piece by Bach, a prelude, which will demonstrate the instrument very well, I think. Accord. Thanks for joining me today. I hope we can get together in person very, very soon. And in the meantime, keep washing those hands and wearing those masks. And I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.